guys, welcome back to another episode of, of course, Arsenio's ESL Learning, the podcast, IELTS, you name it, man. I am here today and I'm bringing to you another episode. This is episode 002, and we're going to be going over how to, of course, label a map in IELTS. So first, first things first. Oh my God, I'm stumbling all over my words already. So first things first, all right? For those of you watching me on Instagram, or not Instagram, for those of you watching me on YouTube, remember that the link is in the blog, okay? So basically with the link being in the blog, you need to click that link. It's IELTS book number 13. You need to go to the 10 minute mark. That's where this listening labeling is. For those of you who are tuning, of course, into uh, my live video right now, the blog, you don't have to necessarily go to the blog. You can just click in the link in the, the in the comment section. All right. That's the YouTube video. Scoot ahead to the 10 minute mark. All right. You need to be able to see this labeling. All right. The map that I'm going to be discussing before we actually get into this. All right. If you don't look at the map, you're going to be completely lost and you're just going to have to hear things. For those of you listening to me in podcast form, I love putting this in podcast form because, again, if you find that map, if you download it, print it, and you listen to my podcast, it would be very, very easy for you. But you're going to have to get the map nonetheless. TheArsenioBuckShow.com. I've actually put the map on there for you guys. So you might be able to print that out. Or, of course, you could just find the PDF. And the PDF, of course, is in the link or on Google. (sighs) All right, guys, with that being said, man, labeling the map, and this has to be probably one of the easiest parts of the IELTS. So, guys, basically what I need you to do is go to the 10-minute mark on the video, or you could look at the map on my blog, or you could look at the map uh, in your mind, okay? Nonetheless, you're going to have to look at the map. So, basically, we have a map of a place called Grand Ford. It says, proposed traffic changes in Grand Ford. So, we have to look for the changes that are possibly going to take place in this specific place, right? So first and foremost, it's very difficult if you're listening to me in podcast form without looking at the blog. If you're listening to me in podcast form, make sure you go to the ArsenioBuckShow.com so you can actually check this map out too, all right? So basically what we have here is we have a map of a town that's going to propose new things for this specific town. So we got questions 14 through 20, and we have, of course, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, A through I. So we're going to have to put the letters into, of course, in with the numbers. So what we need to do, we first need to understand, okay, where could these proposed proposed changes and what could be implemented there? So for those of you who are listening, yes, I will recite this vocabulary out loud for you guys. All right. So basically, number 14, we have new traffic lights. 15, we have pedestrian crossing, which is a crosswalk in America. 16, parking allowed. 17, new, the new, no parking sign, the new one. Okay. 18, new disabled parking spaces. 19, widened pavement. 20, lorry Loading and unloading restrictions. All right. So what a lorry is, it is a truck. But in England, they call it a lorry. Sounds like a name. Anyway, so what we need to do is now go over some of the locations on the map. So on the map, we have three streets and we have a coat de sac, which is a dead end. We have one street going from top to bottom. This street is called School Road. F is at the very top. And then when it curves in a little bit, we have G. Opposite of G is the school, okay? So whatever G is, it's opposite of the school. Very, very, very important to understand that aspect of it, okay? We go down a little bit further. On the next curve is H. H is not near anything. However, we go down a little bit more. There is a fork, and there's a right-hand turn that you could take onto a place called High Street, okay? Okay? Right there at that right-hand turn is E. So basically, we have F, G's in front of the school, H is at the second curve, E is where you make a right-hand turn onto High Street. 
All right, go down a little bit further. On the left-hand side, you have I, which is the supermarket, and I is directly in front of the supermarket. It is not opposite as G is of the school. Now, do you guys understand what I'm saying? So now what we're going to do, we're going to turn into High Street, okay? So when you make a right hand turn into High Street, you're literally right there on E. You go just a little bit more, probably 100 meters. On your left, you have a supermarket. On your right, you have the chemist, also known as the pharmacy out there in America. Now, directly in front of the chemist, you have D. All right. Now, go down a little bit more. You make another right. That is the coat de sac. What you have there, you have a bank. On your left and opposite of the bank, you have the letter C. Come out the coat de sac, go a little bit more down the high street. Before you get to the end of high street, on your left, you have the library. In front of the library, you have the letter B. You go down, you get to Station Road, and right at the corner, okay? So basically, Station Road in front of you, on the right-hand corner, you have A. And Station Road has nothing else going up and left outside of the paper. That is the map that we are going over today. Of course, if you go to the 10 minute mark in this YouTube video in the comment section for everyone who is live, very easy, okay? Go to YouTube, put IELTS 13 or look at the link, of course, in my description on YouTube. You will be able to find everything there. Or, of course, you can just go onto my blog and everything is absolutely there, including the map. Now, guys, I've discussed everything. What we need to do is figure out with A through I, which are they? 14, 15, 16, 17 through 20. Now, new traffic lights. The new traffic lights are going to be in the middle of the road. The only thing in the middle of the road or the only letter that's in the middle of the road is E. I don't know. I'm just previewing what could potentially take place. All right. Now, a pedestrian crossing is for pedestrians to cross the street. Now, would a pedestrian crossing be on the corner of a row? Probably not. In front of the library? Not sure. Opposite of the bank in a coat de sac? Probably not. However, there's a chemist, a supermarket, and the letter D there. Could the pedestrian crossing be there? Hmm. How about the other supermarket on School Road? Could it be directly in front of that? Hmm. Could it be in the middle of nowhere, which is H? Hmm. School. Could it be opposite of the school? Possibly, but parking can also be there too. So we go into parking allowed. So parking allowed has to be in an empty space. So that could be opposite of the bank. It could be H, which is kind of next to the school. It could be opposite the school, but it can't be F as you're entering the town because that wouldn't make any sense to park at the beginning of town before you get into town. <laughs> New no parking sign. That could be in any of the places I just mentioned. New disabled parking spaces. Now, with disabled parking spaces, it's, it's very, very important to know that disabled people need to be near something. So what does that automatically cancel out? It's probably going to cancel out H because H is too far from everything. Disabled people aren't going to park opposite of the school and they're sure as hell not going to park at the top of the town. In front of the supermarket, in front of the chemist, not really sure. So is it, could it be opposite of the bank, which is C? Possibly. Could it be A, at the corner of Station and High Street? Uh, I don't know. So again, what I'm doing here, I'm previewing, and this is what you guys need to do also, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play this all the way through. And then after that, I'm going to break every last one down, all right? So what I'm going to do now is play this all the way through. And let's see what you guys think. Again, if you're listening, make sure you have this map in front of you. Very, very important. So let's play this all the way through. Now, again, the intention of this is to write only the letter, okay? Make sure you capitalize it, okay? Now, remember, I told you guys about the widened pavement. That's number 19. All right, that could be, hmm, that could be somewhere where there's a lot of traffic possibly. And then, of course, number 20, which is the lorry and unloading restrictions, the lorry loading and unloading restrictions. So now what I'm going to do is play this all the way through for you guys. Get ready. Rest of the talk 
You have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. And so this is your time to look up these questions too. So you get what, roughly 30 seconds? Yep, about 30 seconds. Now, a listen and seconds. answer questions 40. You guys got 40 seconds. So now we're gonna get into this. Into 20. Okay, so this slide shows a map of the central area of Granford with the high street in the middle and school road on the right. Okay. Now, we already have a set of traffic lights in the high street at the junction with Station Road, but we're planning to have another set at the other end at the school road junction to regulate the flow of traffic along the high street. We've decided we definitely need a pedestrian crossing. We considered putting this on school road just outside the school, but in the end, we decided that could lead to a lot of traffic congestion. So we decided to locate it on the high street, crossing the road in front of the supermarket. That's a very busy area, so it should help things there. Mm. We're proposing some changes to parking. At present, Parking isn't allowed on the high street outside the library, but we're going to change that and allow parking there, but not at the other end of the high street near School Road. There'll be a new no parking sign on School Road just by the entrance to the school, forbidding parking for 25 metres. This should improve visibility for drivers and pedestrians, especially on the bend just to the north of the school. As far as disabled drivers are concerned, at present, they have parking outside the supermarket, but lorries also use those spaces. So we've got two new disabled parking spaces on the side road up towards the bank. It's not ideal, but probably better than the present arrangement. We also plan to widen the pavement on School Road. We think we can manage to get an extra half metre on the bend just before you get to the school, on the same side of the road. Finally, we've introduced new restrictions on loading and unloading for the supermarket, so lorries will only be allowed to stop there before 8am. That's the supermarket on School Road. We kept to the existing arrangements with the High Street supermarket. OK, so... That's a and there it is, guys. I love that. That was so, so simple. Um, You know what? I think as, as simple as it was, I would love to hear your answers. Okay? So go on my Instagram. Go here in the comment section. The comment section on YouTube. I would love to hear your, of course, your answers and whatnot. So, guys, with that being said, that makes so much sense for a lot of you out there. If it was difficult, I'll go over it with you. But I want you to get, I want you to have that opportunity to answer this on your own. All right. So, guys, thank you. And I mean, thank you so, so much for tuning in to, of course, another ESL podcast and another IELTS coaching live. Man, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Any inquiries, uh, please let me know. That being said, stay tuned for more. I'm your host, as always, over and out.